There Dang. we go. Joe, oh. you crazy son of a gun. We'll, we'll use the PG word there. <laughs> Happy New Year Eve. This will air tomorrow. Happy New Year's to everyone who's listening to this tomorrow when this airs at about 10 a.m. If you're awake. I don't know. It's a yes, yes. new world. We will all be awake. We're all going fishing in the morning. We are all going fishing in the morning. So I, um, before we jump into the topic at hand, I've been editing this video and uh, from my time yesterday. So a 10-mile hike and uh, got the video down to about 10 minutes. But I wanted you, Joe, to preview it before it actually goes live. I'll be working on this. Hopefully get it up this weekend, if not later today. We'll see. Um, but five minutes into the hike, completely wipe out like a madman camera in hand of course i'm using my iphone i'm not looking at my iphone so i know that would be the first thing that comes across i just literally slipped on the ice and tumbled luckily i am a ninja and i was able to somewhat shoulder roll as you'll see in the video um and you know got a little muddy but i was fine no no real issues um but i just wanted you to take a look at this real quick quick joke oh, I... what your thoughts are of the first few minutes of the video along with the music i've decided to change up the beginning a little bit to talk about the little franticness um but let me know if you can hear this yep can you hear it yep all right Where are you? Where? The Appalachian Trail, right? Yeah. Here we go. Walking with the iPhone. Really need that GoPro with the head mount or chest mount. Wait for it. I still got to do the stabilization on it, so. Bear with yeah. me while it's shaking around a little bit. It's coming. As you can see, it's absolutely beautiful. If you look to the right there, there's this creek. Um, native brookies all in there. I saw them rising. And here we go. Uh, this is the scene. This is the scene. Uh, look at the beautiful brook and <laughs> oh tumble 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 oh there's my buddy <laughs> who is with who is with you there is your phone okay the first thing he asks is your phone okay not are you okay <laughs> Look at look at how muddy I am. Oh. Oh. Uh, that's my um my good friend Jeremy. He's he's freaking awesome. Um, that, that's 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 a great great scene. You you like the you like the setup there? I do, I do. I do. I like it all. So yeah, I, so what how far is that from you the Appalachian Trail? So I think the about just setting up camp and just camping there and living with you guys from the trail. Of course, you know, I'll just... Yeah, yeah, you, well, you can get to the <laughs> Appalachian Trail on the Jersey side in about a half hour. Um, okay. So, you know, right at the Delaware Water Gap, actually. So if you've seen my videos on Instagram or um, some of them on YouTube as well, um, some of the fishing trips that I've done on the Delaware River have actually gotten out of the river right there at the Gap. So where Route 80 crosses over into Pennsylvania, um, that is probably one of the most popular trails in New Jersey. It's Mount Tammany. I'm probably slaughtering it. Pardon my learning disability for a moment. I think um, you said it right. Tammany, right? I think it's Tammany. That, yeah. that sounds right. Um, but what, like, it gets packed. So we decided, you know, let's not do Tammany. Let's, you know, do the AT section up to Sunfish Pond. Uh, we got up there, still felt good. Continued on, uh, you know, added another, I think it was a three and a half mile loop onto the six mile that we were already doing and had to backtrack a couple times. Everything was super flooded. <laughs> Um, so there's some spots in the video you'll see we had to cross the river. I think it was five times. Wow. Um, 
so yeah trying to find a, a decent way across it was pretty cool though it was a good hike yeah that, um, that is i did not get injured on that area yeah um but i did twist wow. my ankle or my knee rather later on in the trip um like i said it was slippery um between the ice and then of course the crazy rainfall we've been having it's raining again here today um but it just slid a little bit and the, when i tweaked my my knee it was probably i slid maybe an inch and just the way it, i don't know my knee came out but feeling better today had some trauma comfrey on it and uh i'm good to go yeah i mean at least everything is caught on video <clears throat> we do need to get the co-pros though but yeah, but, yeah. well i did it i did it for the gram yeah. yeah exactly exactly you know so, and, and we uh go ahead should we should we tell them our new uh our new <laughs> viral craze we started we'll say that for another day <laughs> our new crazy no yeah let's not do that yeah we'll that'll be yet to come um so let's just come. say it was hysterical and, and we <laughs> we hope you all would enjoy doing it yourselves but um <laughs> i i wanted to start so you know we we do ask if you do listen to this and you come across anything that we talk about on this you know shoot us a message if you know us personally text us you can leave a message through our anchor site um, and we can get that voice message. We can either play it or not. You can put that in the message if you're okay with us playing it. Um, but we did get a message from a friend of ours who I will not name. Um, I should say Joe got the message from a friend of ours who was listening to our uh, a few podcasts ago. We were talking about lights in the sky, right? Um, so this individual was saying that because of the podcast, they are constantly looking at the night sky. And lo and behold, what was it yesterday, Joe? Uh, yeah, I'm looking at the date right now. It was the day before yesterday, the day before yesterday, but she did send me some more, um, screenshots of what she captured. Um, so it was, what's today? Today's Thursday. So Thursday. it just happened on Tuesday evening. Yeah. So lights in the sky. Um, Joe saw some, uh, this listener saw some, I, I won't name her. Like I said, um, unless she says explicitly it's cool. Um, but off of 22, Route 22 here in Jersey, saw five um, flying objects. Now, it's we will call them UFOs because we don't know what they are. But in her video, to me, it did look like they were meteors. I know we are having a meteor shower right now. So um, that is very, very, very possible. Um, yeah. I don't know. You want me to share yeah, that? She, uh... You can share those. She sent she sent um five more screenshots. Um, the funny thing is, she sent it to me about I guess half an hour after it happened. Yeah. And uh, my first response was, "Was that around five o'clock?" And she said, "Yes," because around the same time, I saw flashing lights in the sky. Hmm. You know, that was my first response hmm. to her. I was like, "Is this was this like right around five? She's like, "Yeah, exactly." Can, can you um, see that? The photo? Yeah. So yeah, she actually, when you zoom in, you can see them, but she said there was actually cars stopping on 22 yeah, and, and coming out and watching these. But yeah, I see the one there. Yeah, If you, if you look, if you're looking at this and you're watching this on YouTube, if you look to the left of the image, right above that last tree, before you get off the frame, there's a streak running down towards the tree. Now she said there were five of these, um, and you there's another one too. There's a couple in this picture. If you look at the telephone wires, oh yeah, I stopped one. sharing, but I can see that. Um, yeah, super interesting. She said, I, it, "Go ahead." If you zoom in, she said it's kind of hard to tell because she got it from her iPhone. She said, "If you could zoom mm -hmm. in, you could see clearly." There's there's several of these things in the sky. Which there was a meteor shower, but it, it's you know you usually don't see meteors that time of day that brightly. Especially that area is pretty urbanish too, it, isn't it? It's very built up, yeah. So it's um Yeah, I, I don't know. I I honestly the best time like I've ever said, seen the International Space Station has been that time of night or oh, really? you know, wow. time of day yeah. where the angle of the sun is hitting it ever so right that it illuminates it differently. Now of course okay, if yeah. a meteor is streaming in through the atmosphere, you do have that trail that comes off of it uh, yeah. the tail that comes off of the meteor that's burning up in the atmosphere so that's kind of what i was thinking what i personally thought was it was strange that there were so many in the one image that she had sent that i'm not that i'm not pulling up here but i, I will ask her if we can post it on our instagram page um it looks like they're literally running right next to each other and the trails are just coming right off of them um, well yeah so that's what she said she said um 
Where is that? In the one video, there's five of the lights over the furniture store, which I think that's the one you're you're speaking of. Um, I'm looking at it now, and I can see them. There's one, two, three, four. So there's the one you point out left of the tree. There's one in the telephone wires, then one almost directly above the telephone wire, and then one back over the building. Nuts. I mean, I would like to see the video, you know. Yeah. I, I, I can vouch. I've tried to capture stuff on the iPhone like that. Hard. So hard. It's, it's hard. It doesn't come out yeah. as good as what you're seeing. Like footage we got in Myrtle Beach, it, it's crazy footage, but it's still not anything compared to what we were actually – seeing yeah you need my sony alpha with a crazy lens that i do not have um in yeah. order to capture that yeah uh or a telescope with an adapter for your iphone i see people doing that for photos which is kind of cool um that is cool but man what a cool like i said um you know keep sharing stuff if you come across anything if you're fishing and you catch anything that's cool that you'd like to share with us let us know uh any outdoor adventures you know please let us know um well the thing that, that that's weird to me about it is you know all the astronomical stuff that's going on right now you know you had what was it jupiter and yeah the christmas star basically thing happened yeah. where the two planets merged and uranus was and really it, close to the moon that was a uranus really close to the moon i had, had a pop up on my phone i showed donna donna goes yeah. what is wrong with you i'm like i i don't it's the the star watching apps are telling me that uranus is close to the moon which is close cool um, and then we got into an argument as to whether or not Pluto was still a planet. Uh, you know, I, you know, am going to diverge from, uh, you know, public opinion, if we will. And I think it's. Wait, wait, what's your What's your opinion? It's It's a planet. Mine too. That's what I think. But, oh well, we're, we're neither. You there, bud? Well, we're on hold right now. Michael is taking a phone call, important call. He'll be back with us in one minute here. I am there he back. Is. My, there my he apologies. Is. My apologies. Um, no. Yeah, we try to sneak this in in the middle of the day and, you know, spend yeah, the day I'm... doing some things and, yeah. Um, but, you know, we were spending, we wanted to talk today, you know, kind of briefly about water right issues or water access issues. Um we talked about it the other day. I, I had asked Joe, you know, Joe was saying he's a little bummed, you know, fishing is not going on and um, at least bass fishing. And I said he should really be getting into trout fishing, right? Um, you know, in my mind, that's what's going on now here in, in Jersey. Like, I love winter trout fishing. Um, hopefully be out next week. Um, but Joe told me that, Pen that in Pennsylvania, Maryland, and some other states, it's very difficult to get access to these trout streams and trout waters. And... Um, well, Maryland more so where I live because, you know, people think of Maryland, they think a lot of the water because of the bay. Yeah. Maryland's the only state that does not have a natural man-made, I mean, does not have a natural lake. There's there's no natural lakes. So we don't have any real big river systems. We got the Potomac. Yeah. Then we have the gunpowder, the little gunpowder, and the Susquehanna, which runs from PA to um, into the bay. But besides that, there, there's not much. And, and a lot of these places where, where they do stock trout around here are very small areas that are public that are on surrounded by public land where, where you can access. So if you do get out there, <clears throat> you got to be, be there before first light before anybody else in that yeah. little hole, or they're all poached and gone, or you got to have access to somebody's farm or the, creek will run up and the trout will get up in there um well that this brings up slim, slim pickings that Very brings up pickings. a bad problem right i mean we're we both live in incredibly densely populated areas and i, I saw this yesterday right like uh, on the at right just trash everywhere and i was thinking to myself like when i go up to the we'll call it the brook that i fished for a long time with my brother and my my other cousin um you know, we used to go up there and maybe see a handful of guys over the course of the year. I mean, opening weekend was always busy for trout season. But like after that, it was it was dead. But you go up there now because people are starting to, you know, want to get outside in other ways, shape or form or take up activities. I mean, it's packed. And 
you know, if you don't have a lot of public access like like we do, I mean, I have within probably 15 minutes of my house here, I have a dozen rivers and lakes and ponds. See, yeah, we don't. Yeah. Nothing like that here. I mean, I have a reservoir down the street for me. It's literally down the street, but it closes. We, we've discussed this. Yeah. It's only open from mid-April to beginning of October. Do they stock closed. that with Trump? No, they do not. That, uh, that's got large mouth, small mouth. Mm. The, the, we call them the elusive lock raven, small mouth. They're in there. There's not a lot. The elusive. Um, perch, <laughs> crappie. They're yeah. elusive. A lot of big pike yeah. or pickerel, you know. But no trout. Um, I mean, if you look at a map of where I live, there, there's, you know, you got the bay and that and that's pretty much it. You know? well, I, so I went on. I, I was interested to see um, – you know, water right access issues here in New Jersey um, as compared to Maryland. So I was I was poking around on Maryland's site and your DNR site is once again, chocks full of good information like most state websites. Um, but, you know, you do, they, I should say the GNR down there do rainbow trout, golden trout and brown trout, right? Yep. And it lists a number of waters that are that are stocked right and it, it's pretty crazy i'll just go through a couple of them right you have uh prince prince george's harford cecil um these are all encounters uh different counties, counties. yes yeah, um, so it looks like pretty much every county within your state is getting trout in some way shape or form it looks like there are a couple lakes that do have them a number of ponds um and then creeks but it's it goes on for you know a good couple pages telling you that but then you know there's felt felt sold waders and felt and waiting shoes are now banned in the state of maryland I, i've heard that a number of different places but there are places to go what i like about new jersey's website is right from our trout page it tells us where there's public access points right. so you have to dig for it like oh. you have like a spreadsheet and it'll say public parking here and you know i personally typically do not hit those spots because those are the spots that are the most densely populated or shoulder to shoulder if so, you will. let me share this with you this map here yeah. um <clears throat> fair screen oh you got it stable oh did i not yeah yep there you go it's because we don't trust you joe so can you see this map here are you seeing this? You need to open it a little bit larger. Oh, larger? Hold on one second. Yeah. Boom. Now you're seeing it? Uh, so I live... There you go, yeah. I live in this area here. Mm -hmm. Now, this is all the reservoir, and this looks like creeks and stuff that are accessible. It's not. Not very accessible. Mm -hmm. Now, is it like, because you'd have to hike through woods to get to it, or is it like fenced off area, private property? You can. So this reservoir is the reservoir that's down the street from my house. You could fish here with electric boats only. All around the shore, if I could Navionics this, it's super, super, super shallow. This is not a deep reservoir. The deepest spot, I think, is like 60 feet, and that's like in this area. Hmm. So when you're fishing from the shore, I mean, you're literally fishing zero to four feet. And during the winter, they're not going to – you're not likely to find them there. But if you look around, like if you look at a map in your area, you have creeks and rivers and, and lakes and everywhere. So this this shows as a lake here. Yeah. This 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 is the apartment lake I always tell you about. Oh yeah, yeah. That you're not allowed to fish in. They have it fenced in. Getting in there, they kick you out. And they show this as a creek. <clears throat> this this doesn't exist. <laughs> there there's there's no creek there. There's just not a lot of. One popular place they do go is to Gunpowder, which is up in by Moncton. There it is. Right there. This little stretch. Yeah. And this follows around the NCR trail. The problem is a lot of that runs through people's property. Um, I'll stop sharing that. A lot of that runs through um, people's property, and, and you can't just – they're not happy to have people going through their property and, and – but legally speaking if you were in the water is it legal it's supposed, it's supposed to be it's a pretty rural area up there and you know you know i i think that's pretty much anywhere in the country the water is supposed to be 
not owned. That's the whole thing going on at the Jersey Shore and these people fighting beach access and all, and all that kind of stuff. But, but it, it always makes the, me... the other problem is with that body of water. So there's an the NCR trail, which the NCR trail used to be part mm-hmm. of the, the, um, the Baltimore, Pennsylvania rail line that ran yeah. from Baltimore City up. The, and now it's like a hiking trail. Well, the problem is now during the summer, they have these groups come in in the springtime tubing companies. <laughs> and that river, which I is know. not that big, is literally just packed yeah. butthole deep with just yep. tubers. Yep. And like, you can't do anything. I, I have had that destroyed, issue. destroyed, destroyed yeah. with litter and, and just garbage. It never used to be like that. Growing up, you would go up there and it was pristine, pristine. Yeah. But now what happens, air temperatures hit 68, 65. Literally, I'll, t- I'll, I'll, I'll take video this year of it. It will blow your mind to the point where the people at the one trailhead where, you know, has parking. There's a little town there. Town's been in fights with these tubing companies to ban them because they were just mm. jamming the public roads and private roads with cars and just ruining it for everybody. Yeah. And the other problem we have is people who, who will kind of like creep on the DNR and find out where they're stocking at. And then once they release the trout, they'll go in there and just poach the hell out of them. And, you know, my buddy Joe used to say, you know, if you're not fishing the first week of the season. No excuse. It, you know? yeah. I mean, I can't tell you how many times me and Brennan would go try to go trout fishing. You have to get there so, so early. And you would see people already leaving just stringers of trout. And, you know, what's, it, what's the answer, though? What, what do you see as being the answer? Because, you know, I you see that in every outdoor area, especially the most easily accessible outdoor areas and most popular outdoor areas. And it's that's like, the, th- the thing. How do you here. stop it? You, you really can't. I mean, a, Brian told me a story about, you know, catching people poaching and we've caught people poaching trout a couple times and we've called, um, you know, the, right. Our DNR or, you know, our fish and wildlife and, and you can't even get through to anybody. So it's like, I'm not going to confront them because you don't know if they have weapons. I mean, I, you, exactly. New Jersey's not, I talked about this yesterday with my buddy. I said, New Jersey is a not like we can't carry weapons like pretty much at all. So you're SOL and you don't know if other people are going to carry them. I mean, there's people in this you, criminals are going to break the law regardless oh, of what ex- the law exactly. is. So it, if you're out in the middle of the woods, you were telling me the story about someone who got killed trout fishing. Um, it's happened. It's, yeah. it's happened in Maryland. I mean, it, it's 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 crazy. T- tempers fly high because there's there's not a lot of, I guess, access or space around here, and the areas that are get 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 crowded. Um, now, when you were out in Colorado, kind of when you were out in Colorado, did you do any fishing? I did a little bit for trout. Yeah. Yeah. See, but there was that was it. See, the thing like there. Literally creeks, what I call a creek, small, small creeks. Yeah. There would be trout in there, just yeah. natural trout. just and, and that was everywhere, everywhere. But as far that as access ex- goes, is my question. Oh. Did you run into it? No, no. I mean, there. if you wanted to fish, you could go fish, and there, there wouldn't be people around. Well, because um, you guys also in Colorado has tons of public access land, like we do exactly. here in New Jersey. So it's, it's exactly. a little bit easier. Yeah, exactly. So I, I don't know what it is. Like when you look at the map of Maryland, you'll see all these things that are creeks, but I, I, they're more underwater. I mean, on, on underground water. Um, a lot of the f- creeks are real small farm, farm owned creeks. Yeah. Um, well, here, here's what, here's I what I recommend. Some rivers, but. Is, you know, never trespass on anyone's property. But I, I think, you know, if you're a big avid outdoorsman, I think it's important to have conversations with your local representatives, right, and in government, and have the conversations about getting access to right. these outdoor areas. Now, with that comes great responsibility, right? Like you never trash the areas that you're doing it. I always I left yesterday from hiking with more crap than I went with because I was picking up exactly. garbage. The entire time. Trash. I didn't bring gloves with me, and I didn't bring a garbage bag. There were we found toothpicks, like the actual flossing toothpicks. We found masks everywhere. Um, in part of the video, I show it. Like you're not supposed to have fires in New Jersey on the Appalachian Trail, and there were like actual still burning fires that I was stomping out, and it was like there was nobody there. It's like respect where you are, and maybe people would allow you to come onto their property. I had a friend. I think that's the big problem, or in the areas we are, because yeah. like you said, they're heavily populated and. 
people get out there and, and, and treat stuff like crap, you know? Yeah. But you, you have this whole mentality, right? Like where I get it. Like we in America, we have property rights, right? Like we want property. We want to have things that are ours, but you know, you can ask homeowners. Like I had a friend who used to, there was a private pond on this guy's yard right off this main road here in Jersey on the way to one of the places that I fish. And he stopped one day and was like talking to the guy and was like, Hey, like, can I fish your pond? Like he asked him, like, you know, do you mind if I fish your pond? And the guy goes, yeah, he's like, that's fine. Just please don't trash it. He goes, oh, cool. I'll bring you, you know, a six pack every time I come. What's your favorite beer? What's your favorite alcohol? Whatever. And every day he would go fishing there like a couple times a year. He would bring a six pack, leave it on his steps, not ring the bell, fish for an hour or two, catch a ton of fish because nobody fished this pond and then went on his merry way. So you have the ability to knock on a door. Or, you know, if you see someone checking their mail and you're you know, frequent in the area, a neighbor or whatever, you can have those conversations. Um, yeah. But don't just start trespassing, especially in some areas where, you know, people may be, but you know, on. that's the thing now you, you will, you, I see a lot of private ponds, not a lot. I, I see a handful and they're all posted, keep out private pond, no fishing. That's right. And I think it all stems back to, I'm sure at one time people could fish there, but there's, you know, there's always a person that, that yep. does something to ruin it for all. And it, it's, it's, kind of sad i get it if i had a nice pond on my property i wouldn't want people coming in there and just trashing the hell out of it you know one thing i see all the time is fishing people just leaving their line in the water and you know or in the trees and you know i understand there might be a circumstance where something happens where right. worst case you have to do that but a lot of times it's just sheer laziness especially if i ever do go shore fishing when i do from the shore mm -hmm. i'll see people were shore fishing there and they leave their yeah. My bait package, all their stuff. It's like their monster cans, that? their twisted tea yeah. cans that they hit someone with. It's like right. Yeah. yeah. See what I, I mean? Think. It's a, it's a shame. Yeah. A shame. So. Well, I th I think the there are places I'm gonna try and get you out there, and of course I know you're not a fly fisherman, but I'll, I'll tell you what you should be using. I'll find you a nice easy spot that you know hopefully isn't packed. Um, there, there's there's a a fly company around me and 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 i know where they go out yeah i'd, I'd love to see you here. get on a monster brown or golden trout uh, i mean i love so right now my my mind is almost almost to bass fishing you got a month man you got you gotta do something uh, it's dude i'm telling you that comp once once you compete that competition gets in you and it's yeah and I'm almost what a month out from the first comp, and it's like, yeah, I'm you've been practicing in your in your back there. You've been casting, and I'm gonna get you one of those pitch. magnet you fishing kits with like you, the little. You can always pitch. Like I go to my basement, and I'll practice pitching. You know, yeah. pitching. Big thing with fishing, you know, is accuracy in casting is a big big deal, especially when you're you're flipping or pitching. I mean, you're taking that bait, and you're you know you're seeing the object you want to get at. You got to put it right in that area. Um, so it's always good to go out. You'll hear guys say, go out in your backyard and just practice flipping or pitching. And uh, I do that a lot. And, yeah. and, and that does make a huge difference once you get that down and you get very accurate. Um, yeah, they say the same for fly fishing. They say put like yeah. a, a piece of felt or something on the end of your line there and, and just cast. I mean, I, I think that's my biggest problem. And it's one of my goals for 2021 is to get more consistent with my casting um, you know, roll casting, I think I've been getting somewhat better. I was always terrible at roll casting and I'm out to about maybe 40 feet now, which is pretty darn good in my opinion. Um, but fly fishing, I, I do double haul and a couple things and I get out there, but I think I can do more and more consistency and actual more accuracy. Um, you know, big water is not something that I typically fish with the fly rod. Right. You know, I, I do on lakes, um, but I'm not, if it's too windy, I'm not fighting it, man. I'm just, that's why I bring my, my spinning reel on, on certain days. If I know that the wind's going to pick up yeah. at some point, I'm just going to switch. I'm not fighting it or, yeah. or I'll troll. I'll troll with my fly rod. I, I have no problem with that. If I'm in the canoe uh, and it works. I mean, I can tell you this from practicing pitching and flipping. Once you start getting more and more accurate, you notice a difference of, of, as far as number of fish catch. Yeah. You know, when I can roll up to a dock and I can pick it apart just accurately where I want to pitch 
it definitely makes a huge, huge it's a game changer. Yeah. Game changer. Well, I'm, it really is. I'm and a that professional. Goes to skipping too. You know, these guys pitch skip. The guys will like they'll be flipping or pitching, <laughs> and they can still skip it. So you know, you're doing like this motion, and they're yeah. skipping it. That's the one you got to conquer because one of the guys I fish with, he could pitch skip that thing into an area like this, and just like, and it, man. The fish catches you get off of that is insane. Insane. I don't know. I'm a professional skipper, as we talked about a few, uh, a few episodes. He's the yeah. only guy who could skip a bait like 400 yards. <laughs> and it's just out of sheer muscle, just like, boom. Yeah. <laughs> like he just wills the bait and it, it skips. I've never seen anything like it. That's one of the first things we got to shoot with the GoPro this summer. Is Oh, totally. We're going to have to set it up on the on the dock and we're going to. It is like ungodly 10... how this guy can skip. <laughs> well maybe that's our breakout moment right is uh that that'll be the viral video that's so yeah oh boy well uh you know i think that wraps it up joe i I do think that you need to get out there before maybe at least when you get your gopro try trout fishing please and uh i'm going to i I used to go out with my buddy joe years ago back when riley was Mm -hmm. so we would go up to the gunpowder and and trout fish with, with light fishing tackle yeah just yeah, do it, man. But- At least once. And uh, I'd love to see some video. I know that the people out there would love to as well. And um, we'll see. All right, buddy. Well, happy New Year's, everybody. Happy New Year's. We'll catch up. We'll catch up soon. Talk be to everyone next for Michael's Michael's video and be on the lookout for uh, <laughs> the viral the viral thing restarted. So the vi- viral moment, yeah. The viral we'll- moment. Maybe we'll talk about that next week. And uh, next week, we're trying to get a, a buddy of mine to come on to talk about rock climbing. Um, so, you know, avid rock climber and, and a big snowboarder now as well. So maybe we'll we'll jump into a little bit with Great that. Uh, he just got back from New Hampshire on a whirlwind snowboarding tour up there. Um, oh, man. So we'll get a little, a little feedback on New Hampshire's snow conditions. Um, good. Everyone, good. thank you. Have it. a good weekend. Happy New Year. Joe? Happy New Year's. Later, brother. Take it easy, buddy. Later, brother. (laughs) All right, so that was the Hacker Outdoors podcast. If you like what you heard, please give us a rating on whatever platform you're listening to or watching this on. Please check the show notes for some of the links about the topics we discussed today. And as always, please go ahead and check out our Anchor site um, via our link tree or any of the other links that we have posted around social media to leave us a message if you'd like to be included in one of our future episodes. I thank you all for listening, and I hope you have a great weekend, and we'll talk to you later this week. Take care.